Hey guys, this is Doug with fellowshipofthemartyrs.com. Today we're doing another book review. This is on the book called The Graham Formula by Patrick McIntyre. Uh, this is available uh, on their website. Um, it's, uh, you can see the video on our channel on FOTM1, uh, about a 30 minute, 22 something minute video. Uh, you can also do a search on YouTube for Graham Formula and see his page with links to his website. Um, <clears throat> the website where you can order the books uh, I'm sure you could find them uh, on Amazon or whatever but if you go to christianebooks.com or www.sfee.info that's uh, Sam Frank Edward Edward dot info and uh, you can see the book anyway <clears throat> this is uh, really cool book that should open a lot of eyes the video as well if you don't have the energy to actually read <laughs> um, the uh... It, it basically talks about what happened to uh... uh... salvation what we consider salvation in the altar call between the eighteen hundreds and, and the year two thousand and, and following um, basically to summarize back in the day the old revivalists finney and wesley and uh, whitfield and those guys <clears throat> didn't tell anybody they were saved because they came down the aisle. Um, Finney had what he called the inquiry room. Uh, at the end of a service, anybody that, that wanted further information, that felt convicted, they would get some personal attention in the inquiry room, and they would pray, stay with them all night if they needed to, until they, they were um, uh, convincingly saved as a grace, a matter of, of the heart. Um, <clears throat> Typically, in the 1800s, they considered about 10% of those that came down the, down the aisle to the altar were actually saved. Billy Sunday, in 1900, um, was known for his tent revivals, where he basically would say that if you come down front and shake my hand, you'll be saved. And uh, he'd have him fill out a little dedication card asking for prayer, and it became known as, a, eventually it morphed into the commitment card, and basically he boasted of 100 percent salvation uh, rate because uh, he got rid of the inquiry room he got rid of travailing and prayer and he just came to the conclusion that if you feel the least bit guilty or whatever if you make the motion of getting up and coming down front that's enough to convince God that you need to be saved and and he did away with all the crying and the gnashing of teeth and and seeking God and repenting for stuff and uh, did a lot of damage a lot of damage to the church as we know it and uh, evangelical Protestantism and whatever anyway Billy Graham saw that problem back in the 1950s reinstated the inquiry rooms reinstated some aftercare by assigning them to congregations that would follow up with them and uh, the Graham formula is basically C plus S plus C plus F equals D times 0.25 equals B uh, right there and and he goes through what that means and uh, what that uh, what that stands for and how but basically that uh, the preaching of the word plus conviction plus going down the aisle uh, it's it stands for sermon plus counseling plus follow-up equals decisions times 0.25 equals born-again experience okay so you combine the sermon with counseling with follow-up and of the decisions that are made through those three together, only 25% are actually going to be born again, is what Billy Graham calculated. This was his formula that he used. And if any one of them, counseling or follow-up, are missing, well, then the rate is going to drop even far, far less. Um, substantially, a 5 to 10% success rate, most evangelists will consider good. When you have a big campaign in Africa and a million people gather and you say 200,000 people made commitments of faith okay well I'd be shocked if 5 to 10 percent of those were actually convincingly saved as far as the Lord is concerned not just a man saying yeah they joined a the church they're saved it's not gonna do it I wanna read you this is appendix there's a lot of good quotes in here this is from John Wesley this is appendix C on page 117 uh, this is Wesley's Waiting on God for Salvation excerpts, The Means of Grace. Wesley discusses what the believer who is not yet born again can do while waiting for God to save him. Wait, that's not the right one. Um, <clears throat> oh, 
Yeah, that is the right one. Okay, that's the one I wanted to read. Um, it's Appendix C. It cannot possibly be conceived that the Word of God should give no direction in so important a point. We have only to consult the oracles of God, inquire what is written there. All who desire the grace of God are to wait for it in the means which he hath ordained, in using, not in laying them aside. But what are the steps which Scripture gives us to take in the working out of our salvation? The prophet Isaiah gives us a general answer, touching the first steps which are to take, which we are to take. Cease to do evil, learn to do well. If ever you desire that God should work in you, that faith whereof cometh both present and eternal salvation, by the grace already given, fly from all sin as from the face of a serpent. Carefully avoid every evil word and work. Yea, abstain from all appearance of evil, and learn to do well. But be zealous of good works, of works of piety, as well as of works of mercy, family prayer, and crying to God in secret. Fast in secret, and your Father that seeth in secret, he will reward you openly. Search the scriptures, hear them in public, read them in private, and meditate therein. Baptism is an outward sign of an inward grace. I tell the sinner, you must be born again. No, say you, he was born again in baptism, therefore he cannot be born again now. Alas, what trifling is this? Therefore, do not play upon words. He must go through an entire change of heart. If either he or you die without it, your baptism will be so far from profiting you that it will greatly increase your damnation. Finney talks in here as well and others about um, the reality that they would never, ever say to somebody, Congratulations, you're saved. Welcome to the kingdom. They understood that it's a work of grace, that God has to write it on your heart. You are saved when God says you're saved. Not when man says, and certainly not when you say a little magic prayer or when you go down the aisle. Nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible does it say to accept Jesus Christ into your heart and you'll be saved. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, repeat after me this little prayer and you're all good and from now on you're safe. Nowhere. The reality is that we're to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, and even that point where we know that we are one of His depends on hearing Him and Him writing it on our heart, not listening to man. The grand formula should open your eyes about some of the problems that are out there and how often and how dangerous it is for us to say to someone, uh, congratulations, I just led you to the Lord. You said a prayer and you're saved and you're going to heaven. It's not so. This is a journey, not an on-off switch. This is a dial, and, and we're to continue running the race over and over and over. I'm dealing with Calvinists who write to me and say I'm works-based or whatever. No, this is a journey. He expects obedience. You're to be a disciple, not just a convert. And discipleship means obeying him and continuing in obedience to stay saved, not just a one-time thing. If you believe that Jesus Christ is a lifeguard and that he just throws you a life preserver, drags you out, and now you're safe and you can do whatever you want, then there's no motivation for you to seek holiness, which is what the Bible demands. You need to be holy as he is holy, and you need to seek to be filled with Jesus, to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that he can give you what you need to work out, to, to walk out that perfection, to walk out that, that search, that desire, to hate sin, not just to be guilty, not just to have remorse because you're caught or, or because you look bad to the world or, or you, the church makes fun of you or whatever, but to hate sin. Then he has to do that to you. And that happens when you're saved. And you're not saved because you said a little prayer. Um, and, and then you just stop there. This is a journey and this is a relationship and he is Lord. And that doesn't mean lifeguard, that means king. Anyway, I really recommend the Graham formula. You can watch the video online, on our website or on YouTube. You can get the book. Uh, it's real reasonable and uh, you can order them online you can order them real cheap in bulk and give them away to uh, everybody and if you're a pastor that's been preaching a once saved always saved lie then I encourage you to buy boxes and boxes of these and get it into your fat head and, and God bless you I love you and pass them out to all of your people and say you're sorry and uh, maybe they'll actually get truly saved instead of the lukewarm dead body sitting in pews that they might be now because you led them down the wrong path uh, toward easy grace Okay, uh, I hope that wasn't too subtle. Uh, <laughs> more, more stuff like this on fellowshipofthemartyrs.com.